Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ our Lord, though you are God, you became man, and make us worthy to rejoice on this feast of your glorious birth. And with Mary, your mother, and Joseph, your chosen one, to thank, praise, and adore you, crying out with the angels, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and good hope to all. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who in his love sent his only begotten Son to us, and to the Son who was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, and to the Holy Spirit who fills us with joy, peace, and holiness on this feast. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory and thanks to you, eternal Son. You are without beginning or end. You are the hidden light who shines upon the world in the ancient of days, born as a child from the daughter of David. Today, we celebrate the mystery of your love for us, proclaiming, you are wonderful, O God. You became man, yet you are still God. You are wonderful, O oh God. You came down to us and were born in a manger, yet you fill heaven and earth with your glory. You are wonderful, O oh God. The angels, shepherds, and magi came to adore you.
By your birth, you tore down the walls separating the heavenly and earthly beings, reconciling heaven and earth. By your birth, you brought together those who are far and those who are near to celebrate your feast. At your birth, the angels announced the shepherds to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is a Messiah, the Lord. Now, O wondrous child, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to help us to understand the mystery of your incarnation. Forgive our sins, free us from all distress and remember our departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. We adore you, O Son of the Father from all eternity and Son of the Virgin born in time. When you became flesh, our eyes were able to see God, bringing us closer to the one who dwells in the heights. With the light of your knowledge, you enlightened our minds with the knowledge of the one who is beyond our understanding. Accept our incense, forgive our sins, and grant rest to our departed. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kaddishat Aloha Kaddishat Oh, 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 oh,
consciences, that we may praise you with purity and listen to your holy scriptures. To you be glory forever. As foretold by Isaiah, wonderful his name shall be. Christ is born of a virgin, as a child God is revealed. Reading from the letter of Hebrews. Barak Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he spoke to us through a son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the ref refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. Or again, when he leads the, fisher, the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a fiery flame. But of the sun, your throne, O God, stands forever and ever. And a righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You love justice and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, anointed you with all the oil of gladness above your companions. And at the beginning, O Lord, you established the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. And they will all grow like a garment. You will roll them up like a cloak, and like a garment they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's only Son. Belong to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. And burn this incense. Give you this song. Before the proclamation of the Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord.
Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Luke writes, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the entire world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and of the family of David, in order to be enrolled with Mary, his wife, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that shall be for all the people. For this day, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You shall find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with this angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those upon whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting upon them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been said to them. This is the truth, peace be with you. Do not fear, I announce to you great joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So of course, Christmas times, besides being an orgy of paper and cardboard, is meant to be spiritually a moment of great consolation. And of course, in the consolation, when we use this word, oftentimes people will think in common understanding, warmth, some kind of sentiment or feeling. But the word consolation actually means an action of strengthening because the word literally means to be with the one who is alone, solo, 
you do something solo, so consolation is to be with the one who is alone. And that's why consolation actually has the meaning of strengthening someone. On this consolation night, during these 12 days that now arrive to us of Christmas, the thing that we can note in the prayers and you had in the Husoyo that Father Jim so nicely read for us, it speaks about those who are far and those who are near. And this is always coming up in our Maronite tradition, always, in most of the, almost all the anaphoras. And it's a very beautiful image. And so tonight in the Husoyo, it says that you bring those who are far and you bring those who are near together for this celebration. Of course, in one way, it has a sense of distance. The shepherds come from outside of Bethlehem, about a mile outside, and come into Bethlehem, the house of bread, Bethlehem. But there are those who are near, Mary, Joseph, who are in the manger, for whom nothing is done. They have no room, they have no place, they don't see angels, they don't hear anything. They're just left there with the baby, this feeding trough. In the notion of consolation, of course, what it is for us to understand is that God works with every single individually, individually. Through people, circumstances, events that take place in our lives, of course. But ultimately, we all live our lives alone. We come into this world through our mothers and our fathers, of course. But the life that we live will always be primarily and fundamentally our own. And certainly at the moment of death, we are, regardless of who actually may be around the bedside, we are still ultimately entering into death alone. So the notion of consolation is the idea that God works with each one of us solo. And that's the understanding of those who are near and those who are far. When I say those who are near, does it mean those who necessarily are in church every week? You can go every week to the Elks Club for supper. Doesn't make you a super exuberant elk, just means you like the sirloin on Fridays and the price is really good. When we say those who are near, it means for the person solo, for whom the central part of their life is about wisdom, is about goodness, but it is central in their lives. But the notion of what is God, if God exists, what is God, is a central aspect of that solo flight that we call human life. That's for those who are near. Even if at times it, these questions are neglected, the inspiration of that life is one of goodness. That's those who are near. They are trying to find the light. We make our, beautifully, they did wonderfully, the Maronite, we always try to make it Maronite, because as I mentioned to you before, our angel is speaking Latin up in the corner, which is not part of our tradition. We haven't found any that have any Syriac written on their banners, so that doesn't really give us much of an option. And someone discovered a star in the sacristy this year, so the star went up. Though I did take it out from underneath the veil where it was stuck underneath before, it's a little closer. And Mark did a beautiful job making us a luminous crib, which is why I turned off the lights beforehand, as I told Steve. It doesn't make any sense just to have a glow-in-the-dark crib when the Christ child is not there yet. Because if you notice that the prayers are all about that the light enters into the world and God is revealed in this child. And so it's through the red and the blue, the fidelity, the blue, the red, which is the charity, by which those who become near enter into to find this divine light, which at this moment we celebrate as a child. Of course, we know the rest of the story, our Lord's teaching, our Lord's death on Calvary. This revelation of the divine light goes much more profound. And it's an aspect that when we speak about in the anaphoras, you see in the prayers where it says, Bring back those who are far and grant peace to those who are near. And when we speak about those who are far, again, it's going to be the contrast of those for whom the central aspect of their lives is wisdom and goodness and virtue. Those who are far, it, that's not central in their lives. 
paying the bills, getting a job, finishing their diploma, that's central in their lives. And none of those things are evil. It just means that we distance ourselves from what the reason and purpose for our existence was meant to be. So for many people, those questions are kind of peripheral. A, a bit like that extra set of pliers we have at the back of the junk drawer in the kitchen. We almost never use them, but it's good to know that it's there in case we need them. That's those who are far. So the notions of goodness, of God's light, of virtue, it's maybe somewhere in the back of that junk drawer to fall back on on occasion, maybe. But of course, as always happens with the cardboard boxes in the attic and the junk drawer, eventually we don't even know what's in that drawer. And we open it with great trepidation because it's so filled with junk. And so when we live a life which is far, we wind up distancing all of the things which make us truly human and the reason why we even exist, why we came screaming into this world from our mother's wombs. So for those who are far in this Syriac tradition, we ask that they be protected, first of all. And with that solo grace of bringing them consolation, to bring them back to these questions of revelation of God's goodness, to make that centrality truly become one of light. It's a very simple idea, but of course when we understand it, it's an entire lifetime experience. And the reason why I wanted to bring it up is to leave you with just the images that we have this night. Who are those who are far? They're the Magi. The Magi who are coming from Persia. The shepherds, they're outside the city also. They were not considered great and wonderful individuals in Jewish society, spending almost their entire lives just out with animals all the time in, in the fields. But these are people for whom God in consolation does something. The appearance of the lights of the heavens, the address of the angels that speak to them. And of course, the inanimate star, but which moves and moves these Persians toward Bethlehem. They're looking for a king. The shepherds are just looking to see whatever this kind of freaky thing really is. We're gonna find a baby in a feeding trough. Gosh, we gotta to go to Bethlehem now because this, we just see if this is true. If you notice in the gospel, that's what they say. They're like, oh, finally, the Messiah has come. We've waited, they don't say that. They're far. Those aren't major questions in their lives. They're just concerned about this very strange sight of finding a wrapped up baby in a feeding trough. But you notice that when they come, they go back rejoicing. They learn something by coming near. They don't start out necessarily well in being far but they learn something. And we can have great hope that the rest of their lives are changed by that one night. But again, when we talk about those who are near, God does nothing for them. And this is a consolation for those for whom wisdom and virtue and goodness is meant to be a central part of their lives and for whom those are really serious questions. Because we've all lived in the world where bad things happen. They happen to the people around us, they happen to us, and we never like it. How many times I've heard, there is no God because little children suffer. That's a nice cliche, but in the end, it's not a true philosophical argument that holds water. And the gospel gives us a revelation of those who are near. Who are closest to this revelation of light? Mary and Joseph of Nazareth. And what does the consolation of working with them alone do for those who are near? Apparently to us, nothing. They arrive following the laws for the census in Bethlehem. God didn't save them a parking lot. God didn't save them a parking space or anything like that. They find no place to stay in any kind of human habitation. They wind up staying in a, an animal shelter. That's the first thing God does not do for those who are near, is make their lives easy. Religion is not a crutch. And those who are near taste the cross of Calvary before the day of death. What else also happens is nothing. 
That night, the angels don't appear. I mean, we put them over the top of the crib here, but the angels don't appear over the crib in Bethlehem. They appear a mile outside the city. Mary and Joseph are told nothing. They see nothing. There's no light. There's no glory. There's no beauty. There's no lovely hymns before the whole thing begins with the birth of this child. There's nothing. And this is how God treats those who are near. And this is a consolation for us to know that our path in pursuing these questions by being near is not necessarily easy. The shepherds have to tell Mary and Joseph what they heard and what they saw. So for us, far or near, for those who are far, welcome home. For those who are near, hang in there. That the grace of God and the light or the revelation of God is given to us. That in those moments when things seem dark, think of Mary and Joseph on the night of the birth of the Redeemer of the world. God gave them no consolation in the original sense that we said of nice, warm, interior, tingly feelings. Nothing that night. They're just simply the middle of the night in silence. But what we're told in the example for us to have at the end of this gospel is that when the shepherds leave and everyone's kind of astonished by this really strange story, we're told that Mary kept reflecting, pondering, weighing out, reflecting within it, say Luke says, pondering within her heart, considering what these things mean that are told to them by the shepherds. And that sometimes that's the best we can do in life. We just hang in there, ponder what God is trying to do by, us, by his providence, and understand that his desire is always to console each one of us in this individual path that we have in this valley of tears, which is meant to lead us to light, to wisdom, and to goodness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, right from God, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory of the judge of the and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Anastasia. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
page 876. Earlier I said 815. 876, the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O priest of God. Peace to you, O priest of God. Peace to you, O minister of God. And peace to you, O servant of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom with the grace of your only Son and his love for all people and through your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming,
Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy, you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. Dawn from the Holy Virgin, like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of the slave. Yet truly he is the son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba God. <coughs> he cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us, for he is your only son. Fahro deal, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlov Sagi, Metakaseo, Meti Hab, Hosoyon, Haumewa, Hoy, Dal Alam Alamin. Kanno alkoso damzich men hamro hu men mayo barach hu kadesh ya bel talmidau karomara sabish tawa mene kol hu hono denita hu demahun dilan dianti ki khdato. Dahlo faikun wahlov sagie mete shedu meti hab khosoyon haume wa hayin an alam alamin Do this in memory of me each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come, do judge the living and the dead. Do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you and through you and with you Implores your father, saying, Have mercy on us, O Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord.
Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin monio, manin monio, manin monio, nite madro chayo kadisho. Unachen alain uar korbono chono. the body of Christ our God be for us a pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priest, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them, to lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the holy fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen the Archdeacon and the first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. 
the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwelling with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive all our sins and theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will, that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. So merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you 
to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility, and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy blood, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
again and again. We thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. The lover of all people, have mercy on us. Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we pay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal life. You are blessed, and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, 
to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, sanctify us by the cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit now and forever. So we wish you all a very blessed and Merry Christmas, of course. May the consolations of God be with you, not only the next 12 days, but it's th certainly through a sanctified new year. For those who are guests, we have booklets on the Maronite Church that are in all the pews. You're more than welcome to snag them and take them with you. Think of it as a Christmas present. You also have copies of the Maronite Voice, which just came in for Christmas two days ago. So you're also more than welcome to grab the magazines as you head out the door. And again, may the angels of the Lord watch over you for the all of the new year and many years to come. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Thank you.